Hello and welcome to the city of Shanghai for a very special episode of Sea China. Where today we're, as I've already explained, seeing China. Yeah. Okay, so we're here on the Huangpu River in uh, in Shanghai. Do you like my pronunciation? Uh, and we're exploring this city uh, through the course of a very special program to determine what makes this city tick. And uh, I can tell you right here, right now, a very strong breeze is uh, one of the key factors. Now we have three aspects that are very important in this city. We have the very old town, uh, which we'll look at later. We have the sort of middle times, medieval middle times part, which is also known as the Bund, which is an avenue of very historic buildings behind me. And then finally, finishing off with the bustling modern part of the city, which boasts some very impressive architecture. In fact, the whole city does. But let me talk you through uh, quickly a couple of uh, key buildings behind. On the left, we have the Oriental Pearl Tower, TV Tower, something like that, which has uh, got various bowls and various spikes. <laughs> that one there. Uh, then, diverting your way to the right, the next two tallest ones. Uh, World Finance Center, which is the smaller of the two to to uh, ones, uh, which has a little bridge, a walkway going over, and to the right of that, uh, the uh, Shanghai Tower, which is uh, the second or third, I'm not quite sure which, tallest building in the world, would you believe it? It's quite new, it only opened a couple of years ago. We'll talk you through it in more detail later on. But now though, let's go to a different part of the city and uh, see some China. Now, as nightness begins to descend on the city of Shanghai, the hustle and bustle really begins uh, in, in earnest uh, because you can see such a thriving uh, population and uh, a lot of interest here in the, the population of Shanghai. Anyway, we are here at the minute in the Yu Gardens and Bazaar area in the old heart of the city, ancient Shanghai, where it all began all those many years ago. And uh, we can see some really traditional Chinese architecture here uh, behind us. Now we have uh, the City God Temple, I believe is the name of it, uh, which is behind me, over my, I think, one of my shoulders. And uh, this dates back to the Ming era, uh, and once housed the patron god of Shanghai, uh, and encompassed an area as large as the bazaar. Now, uh, it's very popular with tourists, it's a thriving market and uh, a lot of uh, sort of modern, more modern shops have popped up recently as well. There's a lot more to this particular district in Shanghai, uh, as the map says. We're only in one small corner of it, so there's a lot more to see. Well, on the rooftops of the old ancient Chinese buildings, we're here with a wonderful view over the Yuan Gardens. Uh, we can see more rooftops and uh, there are some little lakes which we'll go down below and have a look at later. But uh, first, it reminds me up here uh, on the rooftops where they brew tea and uh, this is of course uh, tea, one of the, the early native drinks of uh, Chinese people. And here all the different tea leaves and things that are used to make different flavours. Wonderful stuff. And uh, I believe that there is a tea making ceremony about to occur here. Uh, wherever we are, some random are just drew us up here. But it's lovely. And uh, it gives us a lovely view over the city because we've got the, uh, the lovely contrast, the stark contrast of the, the old in the foreground and the new in the background. And it shows just how far this city has come uh, over the last uh, number of centuries. Uh, and one can't help but feel uh, of the uh, Chinese synonyms and idioms. Uh, you've got the slow boat to China, the bull in the China shop, and of course, tea. That's all the tea in China. All the tea in China. That's uh, the right one. So, uh, lovely, uh, lovely place here to come and reflect on uh, just the wonderful uh, architecture and history that's in this wonderful city. At ground level, the views are just as spectacular. You can see right up close the uh, the lovely little moat running around the building, and uh, you can see also a zigzagged uh, platform slash jetty. And the reason for this is because 
This used to be a uh, this used to be a royal palace, and it's now become a tea house. Uh, but the reason was superstition dictated that uh, they had to have a diagonalized uh, escape and exit. No, yeah. Camp the right corners. They can't, uh, well, who made that up? I don't know. Uh, the Ewan Gardens were founded by the Pan family, who were rich Ming Dynasty officials. Uh, the gardens took 18 years to be completed, from 1555 to 1577, and were nurtured, but then were ransacked during the Opium War, which came in 1842. Uh, and it's seen many say uh, a war scar over the years, but it still looks excellent so many years on. Well, the weather's taking a wee bit of a turn for the worse, and uh, I've got the coat out because, uh, well, you don't go too far without a bit of rain in this place uh, through all through the year. Anyway, we've now arrived uh, within view of the Jing'an Temple, uh, also, I believe, known as the Temple of Tranquility, and uh, it's nice to be tranquil in such a... Uh, hectic places like this. Uh, anyway, this was founded uh, apparently in the Three Kingdoms period uh, and uh, the temple was completely rebuilt apparently in 2007 so it's not really that old. Bit of a fake really isn't it? Uh, anyway, so um, in the 1930s uh, I think this has been relocated several times as well so it's definitely not the original but uh, I believe it does have some similarities to the original. Uh, in the 1930s, this was the wealthiest Buddhist temple, uh, and uh, it was headed by uh, Ki Vedu, who was an influential abbot, and had a gangster of concubines. Well, they're like porcupines. Porcupines? The church. Okay, right. Uh, and, and Russian people, and uh, the bodyguards went with that. And, you know, I could read this all day long, but then that wouldn't be very uh, spur of the moment, would it? So I shall uh, make some noti uh, noticements, notices. Uh, we can see uh, the gold roof, and uh, the Chinese people see uh, gold as a symbol of wealth and uh, and luck and power, or maybe reds luck and, and anyway, a symbol of wealth it certainly is because uh, well, there's a lot of gold up there. I wonder how much that'd be worth. Probably quite a lot. Uh, and also the the old Chinese style of buildings you can see with the. Uh, Sort of sloped roofs and the pagoda style effect on the top of the the tower, but uh, it's got no bells on it, so uh, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, go somewhere. Yeah. Welcome back to Shanghai now, and I'm pleased to announce, first of all, the sun's come out, and I've managed to uh, unpack the shorts and t-shirt for the first time on this trip, which is always great. No. Uh, now, also, we've got uh, China heading to war here, it seems. They've got uh, plenty of barge boats out on the river. It'd be nice if we can look at Oh, yes, there they are, yep. Fantastic. And uh, we're here now at the Puchang, no, the Pudong side, sorry, I beg your pardon, uh, of the river. We're at the Pudong side of the river and uh, we can get a great view out onto the Bund with all the fantastic historical buildings. So I shall talk you through them now. You may be able to make out what looks like a mass over at the far side there. That is the uh, Gutzlaff Signal Tower, which was completed in 1907 by designer Marty Guixe. And uh, the architectural style, I'm told, is the Adon, Ad, 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 Adonubo. It's at 1A Shangshan Road. Anyway, uh, so that's that. Moving on to the right, now we've got, uh, well, hard to explain really, but uh, the one that looks a bit like that, if you can find that one, it's just to the right of that, the first taller building that you'll come across. That is the Asia building, and continuing along, if you do a pan, I'll, I'll talk you through from left to right, we'll have the Waldorf Astoria Shanghai on the bond, then the three on the bond, Hard to explain these. Uh, bond 5 then, continuing on. Uh, we've got Bond 6. I'm guessing that's the address, so they get the name for that. Uh, the Bangkok Bank Building. The Merchant Steamship Bureau Building. And the big City Hall-like one, which is the one with the dome on the top. 
That is the Shanghai Pudong Development Bank building. Now it's at the wrong side of the river, so it's actually in Puching, not Pudong, but there you go, that's one anomaly. And uh, it used to be called the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Company building. Uh, it was completed in 1923 by the Palmer and Turner Architects and Surveyors. Interesting. And, uh, okay, well that's all the interesting ones that I mention here. Oh, the clock oh, there's more in the back. Right, the clock tower then. That is Shanghai Customs House Building uh, at 13 Shangshan Road. And again, completed in 1927, not too far after the last one. The whitey coloured one then, with the uh, Chinese flag flying in the middle, as most of these actually are is the Shanghai Federation of Trade Unions building. Then we've got the China Foreign Exchange Trade System, China Merchant Bank building, AIA building, Bund 18, the Swatch Art Peace Hotel. That is the sort of reddy colored one. Uh, we're now over here, yes, can you see? And the one with the big green triangle on the top is the Fairmont Peace Hotel. Uh, it used to be called the Sassoon building, and that is basically the jazz heart of the city. There are a lot of uh, sort of old jazz links to that building and uh, there's still a good jazz club that meets in there currently. We've got even more if you continue on right. The Bank of China building is the sort of tall one, tall and narrow one. Then the one that looks a bit like the Roman Pantheon to the right saying ICBC on it is the Industrial Ala Commercial Bank of China building. Uh, and then the Agriculture... Oh, oh I'm lost. Anyway, uh, the big wide one is the House of Roosevelt. I wonder if that's Theodore, yes. is in the present, probably it is. Then the Shang the white one is the Shanghai, uh, or is it white? Well, it's white on this. Yeah, it's got a red light. So, oh. Yeah, well, they all do, so that doesn't really narrow it down a bit. That's the Shanghai Clearinghouse building. Uh, then the Shanghai Everbright Bank building. Then the, oh, I'm lost. The Peninsula Shanghai. And we've got sort of, uh, even further out here, we've got a pyramid sort of thing. And to the right of that, you'll see a big sort of browny colored one uh, that's sort of like a block of Lego stacked up. That one there. Yeah, yeah, that is the Broadway Mansions Hotel. Now all of these buildings here, there are quite a few of them, are historic and protected buildings and they were all done up quite recently in about 2007 or so uh, for the uh, Chinese Expo which was hosted in 2010. And uh, all of these buildings uh, are worth quite a lot and back in the day it was uh, very important for companies to get their sort of flagship buildings uh, or flagship centers located in these wonderful historic buildings. So uh, it does offer a great view and there are a whole load of them and they were all completed in between the 1920s and the 1930s. So that gives you a bit of a rundown on the bond uh, and also behind us we've got the wonderful Pearl Oriental Tower. So uh, it's a bit hazy today, but it might be an idea to have a closer look on that. Let's see. Continuing on on the Pudong, uh, or the finance side of the river, as you were, we can see now one of the most iconic landmarks in this whole city. Probably, in fact, the most iconic landmark. Opened in 1994, the Oriental Pearl TV Tower has uh, quickly become uh, divisive in how it's been loved and hated by the Shanghaiese local people. It's uh, 468 meters tall and as you can see, well okay you can't see because of a pretty placed tree, there are three legs giving it a tripod shape at the base. I believe all three of these legs hold the width uh, even though there is a central shaft going down the center of the tower. Now, despite all the new modern uh, skyscrapers that have gone up beside the tower, uh, it's still the most striking building on the skyline, and not more so than at night time, whenever the, uh, the pearl lights up in red and flashing lights uh, give it a fantastic neon effect. This is a Deng Xiaoping era design, and uh, it's featured in many films such as Mission Impossible 3, Fantastic Four, and Godzilla Final Wars. But, uh, wouldn't it be a nice place to get a good view over the city, don't you think, perhaps? Well, um, let's uh, see what it's like on the inside.
Up now, uh, one of the viewing platforms of which there are many, I must say, on the Oriental Pearl Tower. And uh, on a clear day, you can imagine there will be some stunning views over Shanghai. But because of smog in this country, clear days are very rare, if at all. And uh, we can still get somewhat of a decent view, though. We can look out over the Bund, and uh, this, as I mentioned before, the historic centre of Shanghai. The old bank buildings and so on, which are located all around the, the Bund promenade there, uh, dating back so many years. Further afield, it starts to fade with the, the smog. But uh, there are many other buildings out there, and it just gives you a great extent of how many skyscrapers there are in this city. And these aren't even the big ones. We're going to make our way around shortly to the other sides of this tower. This, uh, I believe, is the... Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm trying to work out if we're north or south. I think we're west. But uh, we are apparently 1,630 kilometers away from the Sichuan province. Uh, so that's interesting, I suppose. Down below, you can just about make out, maybe in between the framework, the uh, the two globe balls. Uh, up close, they're very pixelated, but whenever you're the other side of the river, it does look like a map of the world, which I suppose is kind of what they were going for whenever they thought up that idea. But uh, anyway, so here we have the bend. Let's make our way now to, uh, well, round to that side, the one with all the tall buildings. It's very difficult to work out which side of the tower this is, uh, north, south, east or west, but I do know it is the skyscraper side. So we've got a, a, a wonderful view of all these stunningly tall buildings. Uh, the best way to talk you through them perhaps, uh, from tallest to smallest. Now you might need to crane a bit down, that tall one with the corkscrew effect, we'll call it the twister for argument's sake is known as the Shanghai Tower and it is the world's second, I think, tallest tower behind the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. To the left of that is the Shanghai World Financial Center or the uh, bottle opener as it's known because of the trapezoid effect. You can look up and you can see just at the top of the trapezoid space in, in the middle uh, a skywalk and uh, fingers crossed we'll get a bit of good weather for that one later on. Uh, and the smaller one, the sort of uh, Chinese pyramid -y pagoda type effect is the uh, uh, Jin Mao Tower. And I've got more facts to these, I'll talk you through them more later on whenever we get up close. But for now, the, uh, this side, uh, is, well, there are many more buildings, and uh, this is very much the uh, financial center of Shanghai. Again, the Pudong side of the river, this is, and you can see all these. Uh, worldwide brands that are banks, HSBC, uh, Citibank, uh, and there are many more that you can't even see. And also one of the five-star hotels in Shanghai, the Shangri-La Hotel. For now though, one more fact about this stunning piece of architecture that we're standing on. This uh, TV tower is a fully functional TV tower and a radio tower as well. And the spike at the very top is uh, an active TV transmitter which is very good, I suppose, for a good TV signal, because it is quite tall. But, um, well, that's this side. I wonder what's around there. Well, I've now worked out what side of the building we're on. This is the northeast side. So, uh, north, sorry, east, so we're on that one. So, north being up there. So, really, there's a north and a south side to the river. This, of course, is the Wang Pu River that we've uh, already talked uh, about earlier in this program. Uh, and it separates Pujong from Puching uh, districts. Further out, you can see the uh, the bridge, the Yangpu Bridge, which is the second cable-supported bridge across the Wangpu River, besides the Nanpu Bridge at the other side, and apparently has the largest main span in the world, uh, with a total length of 7,658 meters. Um, Anyway, it's quite a nice one, and uh, this river continues to flow out. If you can imagine that the uh, the Yellow Sea, which is where this river meets the river, or the sea rather, or the ocean, uh, the China Sea, isn't it? Uh, eventually it becomes so China Sea. So uh, it meets it at the Yellow Sea, further on out there. And also somewhere you've got the Yangtze River Delta. I'm not quite sure how that comes in the equation. All part of the same thing, yeah. So, uh, some more of those uh, barge boats. And of course, Shanghai is one of the world's largest ports. Uh, <coughs> and has been for some time. 
and uh, these parts are an example of all the crates that come in and out of the city on a daily basis. Let's go to the Xin Mao Tower. So uh, from ground level, uh, well not quite ground level actually because we're on the, an elevated ring road I would say about 5-10 metres in the air uh, and uh, we're perched in between the Pearl Tower behind us which we've just come from up there behind uh, and uh, these other new skyscrapers which I've already mentioned so I think it's time to, uh, to talk some more about these other buildings now uh, in particular if we look at these sort of zigzaggy Lego brick style pylon type thing, uh, otherwise known as Jin Mao Tower. This uh, is 88 stories high, which looks like a lot, but in comparison to some of the other buildings around it, isn't really a lot. Uh, it is uh, uh, 421 meters high and was once the tallest building in China. So uh, it obviously opened before these other ones around it. Um, this contains the Grand Hyatt Hotel, and the building itself is also known as the Golden Prosperity Building. Uh, it is shaped like a, an ancient Chinese pagoda, so that's where they got their inspiration from the ship from. And it does look very historic in a modern kind of way. The US architects uh, described the building shape as a pen, like a writing pen, with the roof of the attached exhibition center just below there. You see where the TV screen is? That is meant to be uh, the book that the pen is writing on. Obviously it's not really writing because it's a building and it can't move. Anyway, an interesting fact about this building, there is a laundry chute which goes the whole way up the building, all the 88 floors, uh, and uh, all the way from the top to the bottom, and it features a built-in buffer to slow the clothes down as they go from the top to the bottom, just in case they, I don't know, ignite in the entering the atmosphere or something, uh, who knows. Uh, this tower also has the world's tallest or highest post office. Who knew, eh? Now, further behind it, you can see uh, what looks like a fingernail or a bottle opener. That is known as Shanghai World Financial Center, and it's really starting to get cold. I think the rain's coming on. I better grab a change of clothes and head a bit closer to see what's going on with that building. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> In the heart of the Pudong Financial District of Shanghai are many, many, many skyscrapers. In fact, too many to count. And behind you is the Shanghai World Financial Center, and we're about to go up it. SWFC as it's also known, and unfortunately we've got, well, there's no other way of putting it, zero visibility up from the top. Now, uh, unfortunately, yes, this was quite unforeseen, so there's no point in me talking around what is probably where. So, uh, go to the DVD extras if you want to see those, and we'll, we'll put around for a while on that. But for now, though, really all we can do up at this uh, particular deck is uh, is walk across the glass floor and hope that we don't fall down into a pretty scary death. Now let me tell you about the geography of where we are. So uh, if you look to me, I've got a, a, a image here. We are currently on the, the little bridge that goes over, so the glass floor is looking directly down. Now normally I suppose you would see uh, the rest of this building beneath because there is another bit below, but because the weather is so bad, you can't even see that, it's complete white. So uh, anyway, I'll uh, walk across here and uh, see you on the other side. Well, I won't see you on the other side because you're really... Let me go across the other side and then I'll walk to you and I can say see you on the other side. Ah, see you on the other side. There we go, I made it without any, any problems at all. Uh, up at this particular deck, there's not really a lot to do. There's a lady there taking photographs. Except she's not taking photographs because there's nothing to take a photograph of. So, um, yeah. Well, we've waited a bit longer, and uh, I'm sorry to say the news isn't good. 
It's great. We can actually see some other buildings, believe it or not. So the, uh, I forgot the name of it, but you know which one I'm talking about? The one that you can actually see in the foreground. You can just about see. And uh, the one in the background there, the blue lights, that is of course the Oriental Tower. Pearl Tower, TV Tower, TV Oriental Pearl Tower, in any order. So we can actually see something. Now earlier on, we can see a few other things, and if you come round, you can see a few things that are wider there as well. Uh, so we've missed sort of the best of the conditions, but they've actually got something to see, so it's not all bad news. It's sort of fairly decent news, and uh, I've got a little, uh, little memento of my trip here. Got a certificate to say that I have told, or I have climbed the world's highest observatory and got to the top. So that's not the very top, there's a bit more above us, but there you have it. A fantastic memento of uh, a, a somewhat uh, indifferent uh, journey to the top. You can maybe perhaps just make out the uh, skywalk on the Shanghai World Financial Center, uh, which of course uh, is next door to Shanghai Tower, the sort of corkscrew effect building, which is 121 stories high, or 632 meters tall, and opened in 2015. It is the world's either second or third, I should have checked, uh, highest building. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and uh, it uh, at the time, whenever it opened, it was set to house offices, entertainment venues, shops, a conference center, luxury hotel, and sky lobbies, whatever they are. Uh, and you know what? It's time for me to come clean. Uh, yes, I think I've been caught out by the weather, and I must really now admit that uh, we have filmed this completely out of sequence. Hence the reason we've gone from the horrendous conditions of a, a nighttime view on the skywalk to uh, back to the shorts again, which you, you saw me in earlier. Anyway, this is indeed the world's second tallest building, my notes tell me, behind the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Uh, and there is a 120 degree twist as the building goes up. So it's not one entire corkscrew twist, it's uh, just a little under half. The higher floors are to be reserved for the world's tallest sky deck. Whether or not that materialized, I assume it did. We'll never know. Well, we might know. I'll fill you in later, if I know, and um, probably not. Uh, and these are supposedly meant to house the world's fastest lifts, which go up to 40 miles per hour, which were designed by Mitsubishi. So there we have Shanghai Tower, Zhenmao Tower, Shanghai World Financial Center, and the, uh, oh, we've lost the Pearl Tower. There you go. Oh yes, and there's a lovely, oh yes, that's very clever, you see that? Yes. Well pointed out, Joanna. You can get in the credits now. Well done. <laughs> Brilliant, lovely reflection. Uh, and on reflection, <laughs> I think it's time to move on. Welcome now to uh, one of the more colourful ways of crossing the Huangku River. It is none other than the Bun Sightseeing Tunnel. Now this connects the Puxi and the Pudong sides of the Huangku River. And I'm told a combination of uh, a ghost train and a haunted house, um, but I would say the uh, visual is more akin to 80's Doctor Who than a 21st century Shanghai. I must say, probably a bit late, but uh, if you're of an epileptical nature, epileptic, uh, probably best to look away now, or skip forward to the next scene. Now, uh, here we go. We're entering the first part of the tunnel uh, with uh, little geometrical ships. And we can see trams there. These are what we're in currently. They were imported from Paris uh, back in the day and uh, operate on a sort of maglev system. And uh, to me, it just looks like they're going on rails. And uh, I would say the tunnel is about six meters in diameter. Uh, the whole length of it comes to 647 meters. And uh, if it sounds a bit loud for you there in the background, that's because they've got six channels surround sound audio. It's probably six channels more than we would have ideally liked. Now, uh, this is a six minute trip in total, supposedly, and uh, you lucky folks are about to get the full unedited version, so, uh, ooh, very nice. Now, I will call this section probably the uh, neon brush. We've got bristles um, in a sort of metallic hue, 
uh, ranging in a plethora of different colours, uh, another tram there. And uh, now we've got projections on the wall. There are two trams, one goes one way, the other are very much going in the other way. Uh, we're going one way, obviously. From the Pruxy side of the river, obviously, to the Pudong side with all the skyscrapers. Indeed, yep. So, uh, now this is uh, 45 yuan for a single journey as we come to some fish. Uh, and 55 yuan if you're foolish enough to uh, make the return trip. Now, since it's opening in 2000, 5 million passengers have made the same mistake as me in going for this. Uh, thing, uh, somehow elevating this supposed attraction to one of the top five in Shanghai. Now the sales director of the tunnel describes the journey as going from space into the core of the earth and out again. I would say this is somewhat hellish. Now they couldn't show the dirty Huangpu River because it's got no fish in it uh, and opted for this garish display instead and uh, the uh, sales director Zhang Bin saying it's the only tunnel of its kind. Now it's probably no wonder why. Now, oh, we've come to the end of our trip already. I would say I get a real sense of disappointment arriving at the end. We really ought to be given a certificate or something. But now, though, let's head back up to the Yuan Bazaar to uh, take in a bit of the night ambience. Just a stone's throw from the Yuan Gardens is the Yuan Street Market or Yuan Bazaar and uh, as you can see it really comes to life at night. This is all the hustle and bustle and where everything is uh, concentrated in the sir. But it also gives us a lovely look at these ancient buildings uh, with some modern lighting attached. But it really highlights the features. Right. You do know, uh, you may remember back to our Sea England London episode and uh, we learned about flying buttresses. Now we have uh, flying other things at the minute uh, and they are flying eaves I think. And the flying eaves are the eaves that jut out at the top. You can see it sort of, uh, yeah, it sort of comes up at the, the, the side there and it gives a very iconic and uh, recognizable Chinese feature and a lot of the buildings are like this. Now another type of Chinese building is the pagoda which is sort of like a stack getting uh, wide at the bottom and thin at the top and uh, they have all these other types of uh, characteristic uh, architecture types which we'll see elsewhere through this program but uh, a nice lo uh, look at some busy streets with uh, a lot of action under undergoing happening. Yeah. Oh I forgot to mention about the pearl tower all lit up in the background but I'm sure you can just make it out there inside. The old and the new, lending us one with a Starbucks just around the corner. There we go. Yeah. After 10 p.m. now on the Bunda here in Shanghai, and the lights starting to go out around the city. Uh, but at least I've still got my name up on the buildings, or my initials, I suppose, to be precise. Anyway, we've had a ball of a time here in Shanghai. Pardon the pun, actually, there are there are balls behind me. I'm well aware of that. And uh, well, it's been fantastic, as I said before. And uh, this, of course, where our program began many minutes ago. Uh, now darkness has fallen, and uh, again on the program also. So, join us next time. Who knows where we'll be next time. We could be seeing anything. But for now, for me, it's lights out here in Shanghai. Except for all the lights that are on beside me. There we go. Yeah. Except for the light in your room whenever we get a massage later.